You're listening to the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Podcast. What is the correct order walking down to the altar? Who walks down the aisle? Who walks the mothers down the aisle? Do the same rules apply when choosing my bridesmaids or groomsmen's? Where do my partner and I stand at the altar? Who usually walks down the mother of the bride? Should you walk down the aisle alone? After listening to this episode of the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Podcast, you're going to know and understand the answers to these questions. When you are literally five minutes away from starting your wedding and you realize you don't have a wedding officiant, explain to us then how you became an officiant and so well-informed in these things. This would be great if I became a wedding officiant so I could actually just perform ceremonies if that's what my couple wanted. But it was also a great backup plan just in case something went wrong. I showed up to a couple weddings. All of a sudden, there was no JP or reverend or nothing in attendance. This is Sal and Sam with the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Podcast. It's a podcast for engaged couples who are stressed out about wedding planning and family expectations, but want a successful wedding day. With over 80 years of combined wedding experience and insider information, this is Stress-Free Wedding Planning with your hosts, Sal and Sam. A new podcast for engaged couples who are stressed about wedding planning and family expectations, but want to have a fun wedding. Listen now for revealing wedding insider secrets, tips, and strategy or lesson that you'll be able to implement for a stress-free wedding. Information that you just can't miss and may just change your life. Take the journey with us from worry and concern to a stress-free and unforgettable wedding day. The Stress-Free Wedding Planning Podcast with Sal and Sam. This is Sam from Atmosphere Productions Disc Jockey Service. In the 80s, I was a radio and nightclub DJ. On the weekends, I did weddings. At one wedding, I saw a bride crying. It wasn't because she was happy. Her family wanted her to do these traditions that she just didn't want to do. She just wanted to dance and have fun. I realized then that there had to be a better way to customize a couple's wedding day so that it was enjoyable for everyone. I found that my talents in broadcasting and nightclubs could help couples personalize their wedding day without those family expectations. After several disappointing attempts, I finally created a wedding planning checklist and planner that has been helpful to thousands of engaged couples plan and have stress-free wedding receptions. Now, I'm known for my careful planning, my consultations, the reviewing of information, and for the elegant execution and performance. I'm Sal Fusco of After Hours Events of New England. I was a DJ doing parties and school events. I also went to many family weddings and realized the entertainment just didn't seem to know wedding protocol. When I was asked to do my first wedding, I fell in love because I saw the guest reactions and the instant gratification of seeing happy people. From this point, I knew weddings would be my priority. So I created a system to help couples plan their wedding. Unfortunately, I struggled with the balancing of work and family life. I came to the point of closing my own company, but I never gave up. After a short period of time, my good friend Bert Fonseca of After Hours DJ Entertainment asked me to join his company. Now, the extensive wedding planner I created back then was being used exclusively for our couples. It was such a success that we're recognized by The Knot and presented the Best of Wedding Award, and I successfully helped thousands of couples have memorable weddings. That's why together with our extensive experience in wedding planning inside his secrets, we'll take you from an anxious couple to a stress-free fun wedding reception that your friends and family will remember for years to come. We'll take you from the worries and concerns of planning your wedding and take you to a stress-free and fun wedding day. We'll reveal wedding inside his secrets for a stress-free wedding, plus have engaging interviews with expert wedding professionals, all in 30 minutes or less. We'll do that next. You're listening to the Stress-Free Wedding planning podcast imagine going to a wedding ceremony and not knowing where to stand what if you had to plan that wedding and didn't know where to go or what to do do you know where the parents stand what is a processional how do you do a recessional well my friend sal here he's going to try and answer all of these questions Well, the recessional is the big send-off. This is where you're introduced as a couple for the first time, and you're getting the big kiss. (laughs) Yep, exactly. And you walk right back up that aisle. Typically, that order is couple first, maid of honor best man next. Then you have your bridesmaids and groomsmen matching up and going couple by couple, if that's how you're doing it. And then we usually have go right to the parents, where we have the parents of the bride go down, and then we have the parents of the groom. If there are any grandparents, we go back to the parents, I'm uh, sorry, the grandparents of the uh, 
bride and then the grandparents of the groom. And then once they're all done, you send everyone in for cocktail hour and the fun begins. But isn't that where the confusion really starts, though, is that everybody is waiting to find out who goes next for the recessional. And the officiant is usually standing up there saying, OK, you can go now. You can go now. And then trying to kind of usher them out. Isn't that what usually happens? OK, so what I do, I, I'm a little different than all the rest. I really guide this train. I make oh. sure everyone goes down. So basically, when I have the couple send off, I will then bring in the maid of honor, best man, and have them stand right in front of me. And I let the guy know, look, I'm going to tap you on the shoulder when it's time for ah, you two to take off. OK, so you orchestrate it. So we're orchestrating everything. You're not just worried about uh, them making it down the aisle, right? You want pictures to be taken right, too. So you want the photographer to have a shot of the couple and no one else coming down the aisle at the same time. And I do this for each individual couple, so we're getting good pictures of each one of them. So if the efficient could uh, orchestrate it, that really makes it a much smoother uh, ending there for, yep. for everybody. The recessional happens at the end, and there's a reason why we started talking about the end of the ceremony. First, because it really is the easiest one to explain to everybody, because everybody's already in order, right? And they should just follow that order out. And it then, should be that simple, yes. Right, it should be. And then the guests can just peel off from side to side and walk down the middle of the aisle and follow the wedding party. Simple as that. Simple as that. Explain to us then how you became an officiant and so well informed in these things. Let me tell you, I showed up to a couple weddings and uh, all of a sudden there was no JP or reverend or nothing in attendance. Uh, One was because the couple thought they hired someone, but (laughs) did not. Uh, Another (laughs) one uh, got stuck in traffic. Yeah, so I've had that. Town Hall has a list of names for Uh, for everyone, okay? So that makes it easier. But when you are literally five minutes away from starting your wedding and you realize you don't have a wedding officiant, that is just, pull your hair out. Uh. So uh, I was like, this would be great if I became a wedding officiant so I could actually just perform ceremonies if that's what my couple wanted. But it was also a great backup plan just in case something went wrong. And I've had that situation happen a couple of times. One was with traffic problem. JP was 45 minutes away and he was still 45 minutes away, 45 minutes later. (laughs) So, uh, you know, I was able to jump in and I had another wedding where something happened with the officiant. And again, same thing, just was able to walk in and make it happen for them. So, okay, so uh, quickly, what's the process to become an efficient then? Uh, there's a couple ways. You could become uh, just of the peace, okay, which yep. you could do. It's every four years, and it's the election year of a uh, president, okay. which can be very difficult to get. Yep. I live in Massachusetts. It's almost impossible to get, it yep. feels like. Yeah, you have to be connected. Uh, you have to be well yeah, connected, yeah, well connected. Yeah. Nowadays, you can become an ordained minister. So oh. you can literally go online, put uh, in your name and your email address, and guess what? You're a reverend. <laughs> so that's one way to handle it. And there's other ways of being ordained, too, but we're not going to go through all that. L- but. L- let's not. <laughs> <laughs> so when we come back, we're going to go through the processional. We did the recessional, right? So now, well, the hard part is, and it's going to take some explanation, is how the different ways that you can go down as a processional. And the processional is at the very beginning. It's how you lead up to saying, I do. And we'll talk about that next. The Stress-Free Wedding Planning Podcast with Sal and Sam. Wedding Tip Wednesday is brought to you by Emerge Cosmetics. Are you ready to emerge? A new line of luxurious lipsticks and lip glosses created with the intention of empowerment and coming into who you truly are. Strong, beautiful, and confident. Use coupon code EBI10 at shopemergecosmetics.com for an instant 10% discount. That's coupon code EBI10 for 10% discount at shopemergecosmetics.com. Emerge as the true you. Wedding Tip Wednesday. This one's... For the groom, don't be late. The groom is expected to be at the ceremony on time. Underline on time. Typically, the groom is the first person there along with his groomsman and his best man. They should be there to greet the guest and ensure that everything is ready for when the bride arrives. And so if you're a same-sex couple, one of you has got to decide who's going to be at the ceremony first, or you can both be there. Set your alarm and turn off the snooze function. If you're staying in a hotel, arrange for a wake-up call as a backup. Avoid any late-night drinks with your best man or groomsman. You don't want to start your marriage having to explain why you're late or hungover 
for your own wedding. Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> Not a good way to start things, huh? Because you don't want to be late. You want to be alert at your own wedding, too. So that's very important. You want to have a, a night out. Do it a few nights before. <laughs> do what you got to do. But the night before, yeah, you can have a drink or two. But what I always suggest, drink water between each drink. The rules of ceremonies nowadays or even weddings is there are no real rules. rules. We mentioned same-sex uh, marriages here, too. You know, the two girls could show up to the, the wedding and greet everyone. Or you could choose one who's going to be there and the other is not. You could also have neither one of them there and just have their wedding party there true to greet everyone true. okay so no one has it doesn't have to be treated any special way now this all comes from the tradition of the groom and the best man hanging out before the wedding reception sometimes even the ushers would hang out with the best man and the groom and this is where the problem started. Everybody would hang out and have such a good time that they forgot that they had to wake up the next day. And let's see how drunk we could get the groom and see how he reacts for tomorrow. <laughs> well, <laughs> shot it, for shot. Let's do this. <laughs> in England, there's a, there is a tradition of what we call pub crawl. The pub crawl is really based on getting the groom so drunk that at the end of the night, you take him down to the train station and you put him on the train to Scotland or some some other far off distance. And this has been done numerous times. I, I have heard such a, a story, but you do not want to do this. This is a tradition that ended years ago. You don't want to pick that back up. So just make sure you're on time wedding tip wednesday is available on the stress-free wedding planning facebook group page every wednesday join the group for free emerge cosmetics are you ready to emerge i love this lipstick i'm super picky about how a lipstick feels most are either too dry feeling or feel like you've oiled your lips this not only felt great but lasted and looked great hours later the color angelina is perfection a must-have in my collection this is lauren simpson from emerge cosmetics a professional makeup artist with over a decade of experience in the beauty industry that's the reaction we're getting from our new line of carefully curated lip products that wear well and feel comfortable. These are a must-have for your collection. All products are made in the USA, cruelty-free, gluten-free, and most are vegan. Shop EmergeCosmetics.com for lipsticks and lip glosses that not only feel great, but last for hours in an array of different colors. Free shipping on orders over $100. Use the podcast coupon code EBI10 at ShopEmergeCosmetics.com for an instant 10% discount. That's coupon code EBI10. EBI10 for 10% discount at shopemergecosmetics.com. Emerge as the true you. You're not the same as the person next to you. You dress to reflect your personality. You enjoy customizing your drink at the coffee shop. Even your pet's collars match at least two pairs of your pants. It's only natural that your wedding would showcase your unique touch. After Hours Events of New England gets this. They like to give their clients full artistic control. If you find yourself lost, their team of event specialists can help. They handle everything from DJs, photo booths, event lighting, photography, Photography, videography, even efficiency. Give them a visit on the web and call today. Let's get planning. After Hours Events of New England. After Hours Events of NE.com. Don't forget to like and follow on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and be sure to subscribe to their YouTube channel. All at After Hours Events of NE. That's After Hours Events of NE. Don't know what to do for your first dance? Is your future spouse having trouble picking a song to dance with their parent? Worry no more. I have the answer. Go to after hours events of ne.com forward slash contact guest that is c-o-n-t-a-c-t-g-u-e-s-t and you'll be able to listen to hours of music to help you select the right songs for your upcoming wedding again go to after hours events of ne.com forward slash contact guest do you want access to a stress-free wedding planning process then go to our website all the w's.atmosphere hyphen productions.com and get my free report Eight questions you must ask a wedding professional before booking them. Get it today. That's all the W's.atmosphere-productions.com. Look for the free report and learn to shop like a pro from a pro. 
and go from concern and worry to stress-free wedding planning. When your wedding entertainment has to have amazing music, be fun, organized, and professional, your choice has to be Atmosphere Productions. DJs, live musicians, custom lighting, and photo booths. As seen on the TLC TV series Four Weddings, winner of the Wedding Wire Couples Choice Award and DJ Times DJ of the Month. Experience the difference. www.atmosphere-productions.com That's www www.atmosphere-productions.com Now, as you spend the next week planning your wedding, if you want me, Sal, and our community of stress-free engaged couples and wedding experts to answer any wedding-related questions, then all you have to do is join us in the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Facebook group. Once you're in, go ahead and share your concerns and worries, and we'll let you know if you're on the right track. And if there's anything that we need to kind of work on, the link to join us in the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Facebook group is in the show notes. Heidi Hansen Photography. Fun, happy, a little unorthodox, sometimes silly, with lots of candid. Hi, this is Heidi from Heidi Hansen Photography. www.heidihansenphotography.com I like being goofy with my couples, making them laugh, and overall just having a blast on their wedding day. Every wedding day is different, and that is what keeps my job super awesome. I service Connecticut and New York. You can find me on www.heidihansenphotography.com and also on social media. Everyone is talking about the DJ Polly Show on You Show. Dot com. Hi everyone, this is Keith Urban, and you're listening to the number one DJ on the planet, DJ Paulie. What's going on everybody? This is Charles, Hillary, and Dave, and we are Lady, Lady Annabellum. And you're listening to the number one DJ on the internet. It's DJ Polly, y'all. Hey y'all, I'm Kelsey Ballerini, and you're listening to the number one DJ on the internet. It's DJ Polly, y'all. The DJ Polly Show on YouShook.com. We dare to be different. Join us and see for yourselves. You're listening to the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Podcast. Sam and Sal covering uh, how to get down the aisle and those questions that we asked at the very beginning. Sal's going to answer those questions. All right. Processional. Who starts it off? Typically, we say have grandparents already seated. Don't make uh, them walk idea. down the aisle. That's just That could be just good. too much. The first people coming down should be parents. The parents of the groom that come down first. And then it's the mother of the bride. The mother of the bride. She doesn't come down alone, though. She normally does not. She could be brought down by a couple different people. So it could be either the best man, or if she has a brother that's in attendance to the wedding, or a son. Ah, gotcha. Just a male figure from her her family. If you have a son that's old enough, why not? Let him do it. It'd be great. It's just cute. Cute. Makes great pictures. (laughs) So, uh, and then, yeah, you begin with the ladies. So the first person would be one of the bridesmaids. And then it goes to the end at where it's the maid of honor or the matron of honor. Mm-hmm. And then typically the bride. If you have a ring bearer and a, or flower girl, normally the ring bearer would be just before the flower girl. Yes. Then the flower girl. So she could toss those flowers down yep. the aisle for our bride. For bride and yep. that's what our bride steps on when she makes her way down. Yep. Yep. So one of the most common ways that this works is the groom will lead all his guys down the aisle first. We'll get them in place. Then we have his parents, bride's mom, with whoever's going to bring her, and then the ladies, and then, of course, our bride. Got it. With her father, with her mother, or whoever she's going to be coming down with. Got it. That's that's a traditional setup. It's pretty pretty traditional. And that pretty much works the same way with a same-sex marriage. Mm -hmm. If one of the couple is going to be at where the officiant is... Mm -hmm. Typically, that person's parents is the one who's going to come first. Okay. And then the one who's going to walk down, their parents would be second. Got it. You also have had times where the couple decide to walk down the aisle together. I've seen that before. And in that sense, it doesn't matter. Flip a coin, there's really no, you know... Rule on that. I've also seen when the ladies have walked down with their dad. So both of them have walked down with their dads. Yeah. And that's that's really cute, yeah. too. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And the same thing, with, you know, walking down with their moms. So keep it simple. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd be more than happy to answer any of these questions on our Facebook page, too. So if you have any specific questions, I'd be more than happy to go more detail with you. Do the same rules apply for a same-sex wedding for choosing your wedding party and how they go down the aisle for the processional? My experience is, is that uh, with the wedding party for a same-sex marriage is everyone comes down singly. 
So yeah. basically, parents first, as I mentioned before, you have to choose who's going to be first and who's going to be second. Yeah. Again, flip of a coin. Right. That's a choice you've got to make, <laughs> right? So when it comes to uh, everyone else, it's usually one person at a time. Doesn't matter, male or female. The order of which is friends come first, family comes towards the end. Now, the reason for that is... Family is closest to the honored couple. Ah. Okay, so when they get lined up, where they're going to end up, the family members are closer yep. to our married couple. Makes sense. Makes so. sense. Just a, a curious little uh, anecdote at a wedding that I was uh, doing the ceremony for. I was asked, what side do the ladies stand on? When you're doing the recessional for the recessional, typically the ladies will be on the right hand side. Ladies are on the right because they're always, always right. right. That's right. all you need to remember. <laughs> the gentleman I was, I was speaking to mentioned that in olden days was not correct because the sword was always placed on the left hand side. So most people back then were right handed and you had to reach for the sword. So if your lady was on the right, that would be your sword hand, and you'd have to push her out of the way or push her into danger. So the lady should be on the left because you would protect her with your left hand as you're pulling out the sword. And I said to myself, that's fascinated. Who goes into these depths to, to dig up these old stories? The tradition did change. It yeah. did change. Yeah. Simple rule, ladies are always on the right because they're right, and that makes it easy for everyone. Everybody. That's what yeah, I always no, say. No one's carrying a sword nowadays. <laughs> Let's. We've talked about the beginning, processional, and we've talked about the end, the recessional. What happens in the middle? In the middle. That's where all the fun <laughs> stuff is. So as a wedding officiant, one of the things I like to do is what I call stop time. Ooh. And what I mean by that is I'm not obviously stopping time but sure. i want to give the couple an opportunity to take a breath so what i ask them to do is turn around and face their guest i say you're about to have a five-hour event all together it's going to feel like five minutes when it's all said and done so let's so kind of take in this moment and try to remember all of those five minutes you can and that is look at all those faces out there these are the people you love so much and you want them to share in your special day, and they too want to share in your special day. Look at their faces, scan the crowd, take a good look and remember this moment. And then I ask the crowd to please wave and say hi to our couple, and I ask our couple to do the same thing. What this does sometimes is bring the tension down a little. They feel a little true. more relaxed with their family and friends. True, true. So then uh, from there, uh, face each other, hold hands, and let's go for the ride and start this <laughs> ceremony with a little opening. And then what I like to do, and unfortunately not a lot of couples are doing this, is tell their love story. Yeah. How did you meet? Great. Or that, did you have a great first date story? Yeah. Something we yeah. can share with, this, with your guests that yeah. they may not be familiar with, give a greater connection to yeah. you. Yeah, there's the normal stuff. You're going to have your vows now. You're going to mm -hmm. have your ring vows. And then the... Big pronouncement. Yeah, then a, re you know, the, a reading. A, a re yeah, oh, sometimes there's a reading, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. The readings are being done by the efficient more than anybody else oh, nowadays. Okay. So okay. I'm finding people are not trying to add other people to the uh, equation there. So they, they're they looking for quicker now. Yep. Uh, I noticed that uh, many of my ceremonies are somewhere between 10 and 15 minutes. Because yeah. they yep. don't want that really long ceremony. Yep. And then you just have the big pronouncement at the end, and you have to decide, how do you want to be introduced? Mm -hmm. uh, some people want the Mr. and Mrs., and the two first names and the last name. Some just want it to be Mr. and Mrs. and the last name, or just use the first names. Uh, same sex marriages. We've had Mr. and Mr. and yeah. Mrs. and Mrs. Yeah, nothing wrong with so it. So it doesn't, you know, it's yeah. whatever works for you. We just shared with you exactly what you need to know about uh, heading down the aisle. Sal was very informative on that. Remember, nobody walks down alone. And you can do it any way you really want to. There really are not, not, not too many traditions left. Now, as you spend the next week planning your wedding, if you want me, Sal, or our community of stress-free engaged couples and wedding experts to answer any of those related questions, join us over in the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Facebook group page. Once you're in, go ahead and share your concerns and worries, and we'll let you know if you're on the right track or if there's some things that you need to work on. Honestly, we're not going to be harsh. The link to join us in the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Facebook group is in the show notes. Go there now and uh, click on the link and join us in the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Facebook 
Facebook page. The Stress-Free Wedding Planning Podcast is produced and copyrighted by Atmosphere Productions in association with After Hours Events of New England. 